On today's episode, I want to take a closer look at my favorite semi. Nope, that was supposed to be an April Fool's joke, but it's not. We're going to take a closer look at your favorite semiconductor company, Intel, ticker INTC. So what I want to do is just take a closer look at some events that are going to be happening for this semiconductor giant in the upcoming days. When is actually happening tomorrow, just some recent updates and just my overall thoughts on the company. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check Check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. So Intel right now on Monday ended up at a nice $44.52. Yearly, the stock is up over 35%. And year to date, the stock is down roughly 7%. One of the few semiconductor companies that is down that is not in the automotive space, right? I think most semiconductor stocks that are down right now are the ones that are in the automotive segment. Everybody else is kind of up. Unfortunately, Intel is kind of seeing that year to date decline. But like I mentioned in the past year, it's not doing too bad, up over 35.36%. So the first thing I want to take a closer look at is today on Monday, we did see that UBS raises Intel's price target to $50 from $46, but still maintain a neutral rating. One of the main reasons for the increase in price target is Intel's new segment disclosure could tease some of the parts valuation UBS says. So for those that are not familiar, tomorrow on Tuesday, April 2nd, Intel uh, is going to have a new segment reporting webinar after the market closes. And here in the new segment reporting webinar, they're going to talk about how they're going to distinguish and, and their numbers between their two main businesses, which is the first is their foundry business, right? The manufacturing of products. And second is their overall chip design process and the solutions that they sell for the data center market, for the client market, for the AI market, and the list goes on and on because right now intel is pretty much a company that does it all right they design and they manufacture so when you look at their numbers their numbers in margins tends to be weaker than for example a company like amd because they do have the manufacturing push and what they're hoping is this is going to help kind of create this nice division between the two main segments for intel and can really kind of showcase how this company is doing both on the foundry side and on also on their chip design side as well this is a great start as well as the company is moving further into their manufacturing endeavors and as the upcoming years continue we're going to see this segment become a bigger portion of this company's total revenue so it's great for them to start early where the numbers might be a little bit lower because as they kind of progress in this push to manufacturing, we're going to see that evolve over time. So I'm definitely going to take a closer look at this. I'll most likely do a video, so make sure to stay tuned. Before we go any further, I just want to say thank you all for the amazing support we are getting in this channel. We're closing in to 40,000 subs. That is insane. So if you haven't and you are enjoying the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Finally, if you want to support this channel a little bit more, check out my special offer at fool.com slash jose now back to today's episode now what else do we have for intel i kind of talked about this in another episode on next week intel is also going to have another event so on april 8th to april 9th they're going to have what's called intel vision and here here in intel vision they're going to talk about obviously the ai solutions but mainly the ai solutions in the day in, in all kinds of markets where previously they were really focusing more on the client market with the ai everywhere event here they're going to continue that but kind of talk about their new for example data center solutions and ai accelerators like gaudi 3 so that's where i'm really excited about so intel vision another one happening next week and if you're excited or curious about intel's ai accelerator that is hoping to take some market share from nvidia maybe take some market share from amd's mi300x you're gonna want to stay tuned and follow that event as well now, the other thing I want to take a closer look at is about a week ago, we did see that Microsoft is really pushing onto this AI PC. And first, let's talk about AI PC. So Microsoft is doing Microsoft Copilot, right? One of the big expenses of Microsoft Copilot and all these AI push 
is that a lot of the computation is done through the cloud as they're getting through all the kind of open AI solutions. So what Microsoft wants to do is reduce the cost on their end by bringing AI workloads locally to your device. And the best way to do that is by having some form of dedicated hardware chip to be able to help out with some of those AI workloads. And that's why we're seeing kind of all these big players like Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm creating new AI chips that new CPUs, right, that come with that NPU, um, which is supposed to help with AI solutions. So in a recent event, we did see that this is what Microsoft considers an AI PC. It must come with a new NPU, CPU, and GPU powered silicon. We've seen all the other big players already come out with that. It must come with Copilot and also have a Copilot key in the PC. Uh, so it's pretty interesting how we're pushing into the PC market. Another kind of push is that this NPU, to some extent, needs to have 40 tops of performance. And if you've been listening to the AI market, you guys know about tops, right? That's kind of the best way to... the most standard way, maybe not the best way, but the most standardized ways to kind of talk about the strength of a chip in forms of AI workloads. So 40 tops is supposed to be what Microsoft is looking for. Unfortunately, right now, the current generations of AMD and Intel, which is AMD's, uh, AMD's Ryzen 8040 and Intel's Meteor Lake, do not meet those requirements. The only one that actually meets those requirements are Qualcomm with their Snapdragon X LE chip, Right, we saw Qualcomm recently announced kind of this super powerhouse CPU based on the ARM architecture. And they mentioned that, hey, look, Snapdragon is going to be the best player in the AI space. And we can see they are meeting the requirements here for the AI PC market, especially if their um, new laptops are expected to come out in the mid of 2024. Perfect for this AI PC launch, in my opinion. So pretty interesting to see Qualcomm actually leading the space here. Some investors might be worried about, hey, Jose, is this the end of x86? I don't know. I don't think it's the end of x86, but we are seeing an increase in competition, right? We have M3 from uh, the Apple Silicon, right? Their M series lines, which are doing pretty well. Now we're having Qualcomm with their Snapdragon X Elite. Uh, and then you also have AMD and Intel kind of battling at, battling ballot battling it out against each other uh so this increased competition is really going to push all the engineers in all these companies to continue to develop at a great rate. So at the end of the day, this is going to be great news for consumers because we're going to continue to see everybody try to be everybody at the same time. So we're going to probably get some pretty amazing CPUs in the upcoming years. So now I want to kind of finish off this episode by just looking at PE ratios for all three companies that I talked about today, mainly in the CPU space. We talked about Qualcomm, AMD, and Intel, and just want to share my overall thoughts. Now, PE ratio forward, which is the end of this go year, we can see AMD is the most expensive at 50, Intel is the second most expensive at 32.5, and then we have Qualcomm at kind of 17.62. So let's just kind of talk about, about the difference, right? AMD, a lot of investors are super, super excited about the potential of the MI300X, and we can definitely see it in forms of valuation. Qualcomm is mainly dependent in the mobile market and people aren't too excited about the mobile space right now. So we can definitely see that PE ratio being on the lower end. I think Intel investors are like, hey, look, is the manufacturing push going to do well? Is Are, are they going to continue to bleed market share to AMD? Um, are they going to do AI accelerators? What's up with their AI accelerators? So they're kind of pricing it somewhere in the middle. Now, if we take a closer look at forward one year, which is the end of next fiscal year, we see the valuations kind of get a little bit closer qualcomm sitting at 16 intel sitting at 19 amd sitting at 33.6 so amd is my number two position right and at the same time i wouldn't add amd at these levels i think amd to some extent might be priced to perfection this is maybe not priced to perfection but the risk to reward ratio right now is not in my favor it might be in your favor if you are let's say if you want to purchase amd right now i'm not financial advice i personally wouldn't put new money in amd the semiconductor market always gives us some form of pay uh, of opportunity uh, and i don't believe the opportunity is there for amd right now 
At the same time, there's huge growth potential in the MI300X. And for that reason, it still remains my number two position. So not selling, but not using new money to add onto it. Now, Intel, uh, again, I joked around at the beginning of this episode by kind of throwing a little shade at Intel, but its valuation and the way it's moving, I think it's looking pretty, pretty attractive. I still haven't pulled the trigger. I don't know when I am, but it, it wouldn't be impossible for me next week or two weeks from now to say, you know what? I wouldn't mind entering a position in Intel right now. So that's where we're at in valuations. Qualcomm, pretty interesting. I do enjoy it. Um, at the moment, it's not one that excites me too, too much. I might find other opportunities in the overall AI space that might be looking attractive. So Qualcomm definitely looks pretty interesting. I wouldn't mind buying it. I'd just rather put my money elsewhere. But if I was to put buy list on this, Qualcomm would be number one, Intel number two, and AMD number three at current valuations. And that's what I'm talking about, valuations at the moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.